Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is John Nelson. I'm the Vice President of Operations, Marketing, and Sales at BBI International. Today we are talking about submitting abstracts for the International Biomass Conference and Expo taking place March 14th through the 16th in Jacksonville, Florida. I am joined today with Tim Ports, our Program Director of the International Biomass Conference and Expo. So thanks for being here today, Tim. Happy to be here, John. Happy to be talking about my favorite biomass conference in the world, the International Biomass Conference and Expo. All right. So specifically, we're talking about the abstracts, uh, the abstract process and how to submit and why to submit. Now, the abstracts are closing here in November, correct? November. Yeah, 10th. November twelfth. It's a Friday, okay. um, and so yes, uh, and it, we're definitely in full swing right now. Uh, abstracts are coming in by the day, um, and we anticipate. And historically, the abstract process really speeds up at last week. Sure. Uh, so the the ninth or eighth through the twelfth will be will be very busy. That week will be very busy indeed. And I'm excited about our progress already. And it's always kind of a period of uh, great anticipation for all of us to see what comes in the door. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the last live show we did was in Nashville. And, you know, from an attendee standpoint, and I, and I can't say this enough, I mean, it, it, was, it was outstanding. Uh, we had great participation. We had great speakers. The expo hall was buzzing. Uh, we had a large number of exhibitors. And right now, that energy and that buzz is still happening. Um, you know, and, and I think coming off the virtual event, everyone is excited to get back together and be in person. So, so we're excited. And, and yeah, it seems like a million years ago in I, some way. Yeah. Just <laughs> Very different time. But and and how about that? We. We had that event uh, sort of right before everything really spun out of control, but excited yeah. to get um, our audience, our speaker community, and our exhibitor community back together again in, in Jacksonville. And and I hope people have marked it on their calendars and, and will join us, certainly the speaking community. Um, I mean, that's really my first priority. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. And so as we are approaching this deadline of November 12th, or submitting an abstract and speaking, what what's the single best reason to participate in the conference as a speaker from your standpoint? You know, it's a it's a question I've done a lot of thinking about. This is you know I'm well into my twelfth or thirteenth year of organizing uh, this conference ag agenda, and, and I keep coming back to the this very basic and fundamental reality of the International Biomass Conference and Expo. And that is the conference's long history of granting complementary registrations to uh, folks who work in biomass to energy facilities. And I want to say that again, because this is really key and it, it really makes the show unique. If you work at a biomass to energy facility, whether you're making wood pellets, whether you're making electrons from, from combusting biomass, whether it's a biomass thermal operation, whether it's a, an anaerobic digester or um, methane capture at a wastewater treatment plant, you are eligible for free registration. And we've got momentum. And year after year, we bring that audience to the International Biomass Conference and Expo. So if you are a vendor that serves that community, if, if you have an operating business um, that, that satisfies and works with those communities if there's business opportunity for you within those theaters that is the single best reason to submit an abstract and participate in our conference as a speaker because that audience is there that our everything is geared towards bringing that audience bring putting content in front of them and gathering and aggregating the very best thinking in the space and presenting it uh, to that audience uh, on an annualized basis. And again, there's a number of different reasons to to participate in a BBI international conference as a speaker. Uh, great speaker support, uh, high production value, very high production value, 
but I keep coming back to if, if someone said, I, I you can only say one thing, Tim, I'd say, well, it's complimentary registrations for people who are employed in that space. That is it. Um, and that's really, really crucial. And I think that's really a big time differentiator uh, for the International Biomass Conference and Expo when you start to compare it to the other biomass um, conferences that are out there that that are in the space. Yeah, I think there there are a lot of examples where you see, you know, people are exhibiting, they're speaking, they're sponsoring, and they're really getting their brand out in front of these producers of biomass, uh, power and thermal, uh, or if they're trying to get, you know, in front of pellet producers, which is one, it, this is one of the largest gatherings in the world of pellet producers under one roof. So if, if they're trying to get in front of these people, trying to build their brand and they're doing all those things, I, I agree with you 100%. You know, if you are exhibiting, if you are sponsoring, you should really be submitting an abstract as well um, and really building your brand. So, and I want to, I sort of want to double underscore what you just said there, John. Um, interestingly enough, we, we, every year we have exhibitors that do not participate in the abstract process. And, and that's kind of an ongoing goal and mission. Why is for that? Me. Why, why do you think I, that is? You know, I, I, a couple of things. Um, I think it's some of its lack of awareness. So just yesterday I executed on a mail merge. Yes. I know people think, okay, well, it's just a canned email. Yes. And no. Yes, I did send the same email to folks that have exhibited at that event in the past three years. That doesn't change the fact that I actually meant everything that I said inside of that email. And what I said in the email was, I have said on stage, I have said in internal meetings, I've, I've said in conversations with exhibitors that I don't think you're maximizing uh, your experience at the conference as an exhibitor unless you're submitting an abstract and attempting to, to join the conference agenda. And I have also said on stage that I feel like the expertise that's out there on the expo floor, because if you think about, if you're familiar with the event, mm -hmm. you know that we have technical sessions and we have an expo floor. And those they work kind of hand in glove. Um, our breaks, uh, our, our receptions, those all happen on the expo floor. And then essentially the conference audience distributes itself across uh, our tracks to take in the technical content. And there's really this symbiotic hand in glove thing happening between the two. Um, and there's a tremendous amount of expertise on the expo floor. People who really, really know their business, who, who know their specific piece of of producing energy from biomass so well. Um, and, and we encourage folks to go to the expo floor, but in this manner, I, I'd love it if the exhibitors leaned into the opportunity to actually push out into those technical sessions. And, and what I think is really critical to think about is, you know, in, unless there's a line formed at every booth, <laughs> Uh, on our right. expo floor, one of the things we hear is, hey, I'd love to see more traffic at our booth. Great. We would love to see more traffic at your booths as well. That's what it's all about. How about reaching out into that technical session? Put your biggest expert out there. And in 15 to 18 minutes, allow that person to flex a little right. bit on their expertise. Right. Right. Allow them to show what they know. One or two case studies. And and people sometimes will ask me, well, Tim, what do I, what do I present? What should I say in a technical session? And what I will say is what our audience doesn't want is a commercial, is an infomercial. That comes up constantly in our, in our surveys. Hey, saw some presentations that were a little too commercial. So how do, how do I navigate that and not fall into that trap? Sure. And I ask people right. to think of one very specific question, answer one question. That question is, what was the last problem you helped a customer solve? Either with the service that you provide, uh, a piece of equipment that you introduced into their process, and tell that story. One, just one problem. And it is amazing when you start to think about the opportunity to present through the 
you know, sort of that lens, how quickly the ideas can start to accumulate. And I know that if you, you know, inside of the organizations of our exhibitors, if you got with your technical sales team and said, hey, guys and gals, what's the last real win that we had with a customer? Someone's going to raise a hand and say, ah, oh, hey, you know, we, we installed a new hammer mill and, and really increased some throughput. And it's a more efficient hammer mill. And it made a real big difference for this particular right. pellet producer. Mm-hmm. Boom. There is a great presentation. Can, can and support that presentation with some photos. Some talk facts. about the state of play. People before. like stories. They want to see the they examples. Do. They want to, they, do. They, they want stories, examples. They want to see some data sprinkled in with it. But you Absolutely. Know, it, it, but you got to be telling a story. So you do. And way I think, more interesting. And, and I think what happens is, and I've seen... We have exhibitors that that have found religion on all this. They really believe in it, and they do it very well. And what they realize is that you can't you can't lay out for for an audience in eighteen minutes uh, the entirety of your offering. Right. You can't. It's not possible. And I I would ask people, please don't try and do that because uh, you're going to go over time, and and you're going to miss an opportunity to really. Um, make a, a critical point. What I think people should think about is what provides me the best opportunity to establish that we are expert in this category with, with regard to this step in the process. What case study allows me to really put that on display? And if you can accomplish that, you, you'll be amazed right. at what it does to your booth traffic, and, and I period. Think, I, I, and I'm going to ask you to just repeat that question that needs to be answered. I think if, if, it, if people are listening to this and they walk away with one thing, I think what you just said is probably the most important, thing, one of the most important things. So if you can repeat that, you, if, if I'm going to submit an abstract, what is the question they need to ask themselves? What's the last problem that we solve for a customer? Start there. Perfect. What's the last real problem that you solve for a customer? And showcase The it. phone rang. Yeah, showcase that. And showcase the phone it. rang. Hey, John, we're having this problem. Can you help? Right. And you deploy and you do what you need to do to sort out how to help them solve the problem. You deploy the solution and then you, you demonstrate that the problem was solved. If we had a conference full of those types of stories, we would have the perfect conference (laughs) it would be right it would truly be best in class um but for whatever reason i feel like there's this you know sometimes people hesitate or they don't submit an abstract at all and that's the that's the piece that i really is a head scratcher to me i don't sure i don't understand mobilizing to come to the event as an exhibitor and not at least attempting to, to get on <laughs> the there. agenda. You're there. I, I, anyway. you're, you're there. You've got your technical sales people there. Again, find a compelling case story, case study that allows you to let those technical experts flex, build your brand, put them on display, a, build yeah. your brand. Absolutely. Make, make yourself known. You're there. Absolutely. Get your ROI. So, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm, um, I'm listening to this and okay, Tim, you got me. I'm, I, I want to do this. I'm going to submit an abstract, <laughs> but I'm, let's get into some of the, maybe the more weeds of submitting an abstract right now. So sure. let's say I've never written one. What do I, yep. how, how does that work? What do I do? You know, abstract to some people is a foreign word from sure. a standpoint of I've never been in the, that technical world or so when you say abstract, what is that? Right. And this is when, and years ago, John, we started to add the sort of slash presentation idea. Abstract is really a term that we borrowed from um, the academic community. And if you're in the academic community, you definitely know what an abstract is. It's where, you know, you write an abstract to to appear in a peer-reviewed journal. But really, for our purposes, it's a short summary of your presentation idea. Okay? How short? I'd like to see these between 250 and 400 words, you know, not quite a one, one page. And some folks can accomplish it in even less time than that. 
Um, and on our website, if you go to the agenda page, and there's a drop down, and you can go. It goes to submit presentation ideas, and I would definitely encourage folks uh, to look at this page. You can consume it in five minutes, right? It lists the tracks. It lists um, some ideas under inside of each track that we're looking for. Stuff that's come up, right? Stuff that's been featured on our agenda in the past. Topical ideas. But at the bottom of that page we list four different specifications that we're looking for in an abstract. And every year I look at these and every year I kind of walk away from them and think, yep, yeah, those are what we're looking for. Not just in the abstracts, but of course in the subsequent presentations, it's four things. We're looking for abstracts to be specific. We're looking for them to be relevant. We're looking for them to promise that there will be detail. Some of those photos and graphs and, and profit and loss and, and break-even analysis, all that stuff that you're eventually going to do for your customers. We want to, again, we don't have to see that in the abstract, but you at least have to let us know that you will be bringing that to the presentation. And then the last one is understandability. And that's a long word, but um, we've got a generalized audience here. So you might have a business development person sitting next to a plant manager, sitting next to a maintenance tech. And I think those presenters that can embrace that and deliver their presentation in a way that appeals to all of those different constituencies are going to have the most success. So mm -hmm. what is the pro back to back to that million dollar question? What's the last problem that you solve for a customer? Get specific, right? Um, my presentation is going to speak exclusive or specifically about uh, increasing throughput through a hammer mill, utilizing this new hammer mill technology that we're introducing, have introduced into the marketplace. Here's why it's relevant, right? Outline the problem that uh, the customer was having, mm -hmm. right? We were, right. there was a bottleneck on inbound material handling. Uh, we were asked to come and solve that bottleneck for them and increase their throughput by whatever percentage. Here comes the detail piece. We'll support, uh, we'll support our, our presentation with photographs and uh, capture data from increased throughput. And then the understandability piece, you just make reference to the fact that uh, you're going to make it accessible for folks that are in the room, regardless of whether or not they've ever seen a hammer mill before or otherwise. And again, there's also a note here about word count. It's between 200 and 400 words in length. And the last thing I'll say is if, if you still have questions, raise a hand. Uh, we, this is what we are geared for right now. This is, this is what all hands on deck at Team BBI, Team International Biomass Conference and Expo are focused on, and that is helping people get abstracts submitted. And that doesn't mean to say that if you submit an abstract, you're definitely on the agenda. There's, there's another piece out there where right. we, we, we have to move pieces around the board, and, and we like to put panels together that mm -hmm. really focus on topically connected subjects. But I will say this. If you spend the time and energy to submit a quality abstract, we're going to spend the time and energy to find a home for it, right. period. Uh, assuming, again, that it's relevant to the industry. If it's and I, good I, content, I, I, good information, yeah, exactly. we want to use it. Absolutely, we, we get do. It, out it behooves us. It behooves <laughs> us to right. use it. That's, right. the, that's an important thing. And I, I tell the goat hair story all the time. and. All apologies to the person that submitted this abstract years ago, uh, but it was it was a very detailed abstract about this the will be the one person quality. listening. By the right, way. Exactly. This will be the one right. person listening. <laughs> it was about the insulative qualities of a certain species of goat and their hair, and I I just couldn't figure out how or why it came to us or why we received it, but it definitely did not check the relevant box. I don't think the word biomass or, or biomass energy facilities showed up in the abstract anywhere. We weren't able to place that uh, abstract on the agenda, but you know, so far the, you know, the, the abstracts we've received sort of indicate to me that 
if folks have figured out the relevancy thing, because we've got some good ones in hand already. I hope you'll allow me an opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the things that have, that are, we've already got sure. in the door. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, look, just for the sake of t- kind of keeping moving on, though, you know, these apps, all the specifications and everything you talked about, we can find on biomassconference.com. You go to agenda, submit a presentation. There you will see the specifications. Uh, there'll be, uh, it'll kind of show you how to walk through the process to submit your abstract just from a technical standpoint. So um, just want to reiterate that. Um, so let's talk about, talk about the topics that we're seeing and, 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 and what you want from an agenda standpoint. You know? Absolutely. So I guess some of the things I'm already seeing that I'm really excited about. Again, we've got uh, four tracks uh, and some pre-conference concepts that we're actively receiving abstracts into. And we've already got abstracts in the advanced biofuels and bio-based chemicals track. Mm-hmm. Already have biogas and renewable natural gas abstracts in hand. Same thing with biomass, power, and thermal. And same thing with pellets and densified biomass. It looks like we've already got some good traction with our material handling and the storage pre-conference that we've, that's been, you know, a relatively common pre-conference that we've um, included with the International Biomass Conference and Expo. So that as, a, as an agenda builder, as a program guy, that makes me happy, right? I don't yeah, sort of have any weak spots. Are yet. those some of the topics that you see year after year? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so um, already, for instance, on the biomass power and, thi- uh, power and thermal side and uh, pellets and densified biomass side, Safe material handling, dust hazard analysis, fire and explosion um, control and abatement has been kind of a hallmark panel or two panels. We've already, it's clear that those exhibitors, those presenters, once again, want to come, want to share their expertise. Um, I'm seeing a couple of abstracts referencing the NFPA 652. So the NFPA, of course, is the National Fire Protection Association. 652 must be something relatively new. There must be some traction or some things that have happened in that space. So we've got some content built around the NFPA 652, which that's great. We're we're happy to play the role of being a place where people can come and and talk about how to comply with that, how to use that to, to make their facilities safer. Uh, A couple of other things that are trending already, though, and and I think this will probably come as no surprise to anyone who's in the space, decarbonization. And as I'm just sort of scrolling through um, the titles, decarbonization is showing up in a lot of our different presentation or abstract titles. So reducing the carbon intensity of the produced energy Mm -hmm. product, uh, actually utilizing Uh, renewable natural gas to reduce the carbon intensity of 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 an entirely different commercial operation that's showing up and that again that's not surprising um seems like the sort of the momentum at the federal level and policy right now is low carbon reduce carbon so we expect to see a lot more of that and again already have some of those things in hand and then i've already received a few phone calls about this um, sustainable aviation fuel. Mm-hmm. It seems to be right. something that's that's trending right now, and I've, we've got a couple of those in hand already. And again, I've, I've received some phone calls from folks saying, "Hey, uh, we're you know we've we're we're looking to optimize a, a process to actually um, pivot our biofuel production from you know maybe a conventional ethanol or biodiesel or renewable diesel uh, operation to." to capture and, and push into that sustainable aviation fuel market, sometimes just referred to in the shorthand of SAF. Right. Uh, so if you're out there, if you're listening and, and you're looking at uh, sustainable aviation fuel and wanting to participate in what a lot of folks really are excited about, uh, you know, a very interesting fuel market. Uh, yes, please submit. And then to sort of sum everything up, 
uh, when in doubt, submit, you know, I, I mean that, um, if you're wondering, we can't place abstracts that we don't receive and we can't put panels together around topics where, where no one is, has submitted anything. Um, that's not how we're built. That's not how we're wired. We really allow, uh, the professionals in the space to, to dictate what goes on our agenda. Yes, we have tracks and, and yes, we have panels that, that are sort of perennial and show up year after year because, because the issue is a perennial, right? I mean, the, the threat of, uh, of fire and, and dust explosions at, at facilities that handle woody biomass isn't going away. It's an ever present danger. It has to be controlled. And as a result, it shows up on our agenda year after year after year. But in the same breath, um, you know, there are every year we've got, you know, we've, we've got first time panels. Um, and I think about, um, well, artificial intelligence, right? Increasingly, um, data capturers and, uh, those companies that really excel in that in helping facilities, there's a yeah, there's autonomy, just a, uh, yeah, data yeah, capture, uh, a lot yeah, of that autonomous is showing, data capture showing up. We've done that in pre conferences, even so, yeah, absolutely. I, totally. So, and that one is hard for us to anticipate. And this is really when we rely on our exhibiting and speaking community to to shed a light on things because at some point, at one point that, that was not a panel or topical discussion that we right. had and we didn't think of it. Right. We're not out there solving problems. But as we know, um, data is becoming more, more absolutely. relevant, more important. Absolutely. And it, so, so if you so feel I, like you're on the cutting edge of something, I would just say, please submit it. And you know, the other, I, I took a phone call yesterday uh, from an exhibitor that's, that's eyeing our agenda, wants to participate in it. And a lot of times people will say, Hey, I want to present on X. It's kind of a new concept. Here are some other players in this space that you might want to reach out to. Um, if you're not able to populate the panel entirely, we that, love those idea. types of phone calls. Yeah, we yeah. love those types of phone calls. Or if you have help us identify there, the company. Yeah, absolutely. So. If you're out there in the space, and you're working in a collaborative way with other uh, vendors, other companies that are helping to solve a problem. And, and you find yourself, um, again, confronting those problems in kind of a, a team effort, even though you're not under the same umbrella. Let us know that. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Uh, we, it's, it's very common practice for us to, to have three people on a panel and have you know someone that's on that panel say, you know who would really round this panel out? This person or this organization. Very common for us to then to say, great. And then now we engage in some official invitation. So again, submit, engage in the process. And I think people will be very surprised and pleased with, with A, how easy it is, and B, just how much value it adds to their overall conference experience. Yeah, great. Great. Yeah. And, and to reiterate again, we, you know, when we see topics like carbon capture popping up uh, or sustainable aviation fuel, which it, from an edit editorial standpoint, we are seeing that and it is becoming more popular um, it, because of the reasons you stated the government backing, et cetera. And so if you're seeing topics Going back to your point, if you're seeing topics that maybe aren't listed specifically, uh, they should submit an abstract regardless. Now, if, if they have a question on where does this fit, should they can they reach out to you? Absolutely. Yeah. And so you, speakers at BBI International, speakers at BBIinternational.com is a great place to send questions. Dana Bastian uh, is our... Um, speaker support coordinator. She's listed on the website. That's a great place of entry for a question. Sometimes those questions can be answered by Dana. Other times they get referred to me and other times still they get referred to other folks in the editorial team. Again, anyone who touches that content and thank you for bringing up editorial uh, because our media and editorial 
uh, content always spills over into our conference content. They, again, it's a hand and glove relationship. And it is our hope that those things that are popping up and showing up in our newsfeed on biomassmagazine.com will also show up in the technical sessions right. of the International and, Biomass Conference and, and Expo. And I know that dialogue with Anna Simmet, the editor of Biomass Magazine and Pell Mill Magazine, I know she's in dialogue with you, me, so hopefully, you know, and we're trying to keep those channels going, so she's very involved with this process as well. Absolutely. So, uh, All right. Well, I, I you know, kind of looking at our time, that's about everything – we kind of wanted to cover on this topic. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to kind of just end with? You know, I, I think I would end with again, and, and I, I'm speaking to, we, we've got a, a, a strong stable of speakers who've embraced this opportunity for years. And in that way, what I'm about to say isn't really targeted for them. However, and this, the folks I'm speaking to right now are, are folks that have, have exhibited and are can planning on exhibiting maybe for the first time at the 2022 show. If you're not thinking about submitting an abstract and you're not considering presenting, I'd ask you to ask yourself, why not? I, I Again, and we talked about this yesterday, John, I don't understand the downside of, of attempting right. to, to join the conference agenda. It, I think, and if there's any any chance that folks think it's it's this long shot and very difficult to get on the agenda, please please reach out to us. Right. Please do submit, and we'll see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it I, won't be. Yeah, it won't no, be difficult. No, exactly. It, we work very hard to find a home for. I mean, truly, like pull out our hair, we'll introduce a, a new pre-conference <laughs> well, well, if we yeah. need to. And, and we've that, done that's that. That's a good point. You know? There's a there's pre-conference events that people yes. can speak at. And, and if you find enough information, we may create one if it's relevant. Uh, absolutely. It's, and that's totally a, 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 reg, a common practice. And I would point to um, a different, different show, but on the ethanol side, we had so much low-carbon – uh, content that we had, we added an entire day long pre-conference to look specifically at reducing the carbon intensity of ethanol production. We just had so much content that if we pushed it all into the main agenda, we'd be pushing other topical stuff out because right. there is a finite amount of content that we can fit into I guess what you'd call the main show. Right. It, it, well, it, and in those instances, we just, we will put together a pre-conference. So please ask yourself the question, how can speaking be a part of our conference plan? Um, and, and if we aren't planning on, on speaking, why not? Yeah. Why are we not doing that? Right. right. And we have, in addition to creating pre-conference events, we also have the innovation stage on the Expo Hall floor, which is designed specifically for people to talk about their products and services. So, again, if you're not fitting on the agenda or even a pre-conference and you're kind of an outlier, we'll still say, hey, let's push their, let's push that person to the top or that company to the top of the list to be on the innovation stage. So at least you're getting that exposure as well. So, yep. I mean, there's multiple areas, but by submitting, you're saying, Hey, I, I've got information here. I want to share. And that helps us. Absolutely. And I, I'll add this on the innovation stage. I, I think it's an underutilized um, platform for, for things like new product launches or new business unit launches. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, often we, we talk about um, wanting to avoid really commercial type presentations inside of the technical sessions. And I maintain that, that that's not what we want there. We want, again, case studies. Here's what we did. Here's how we deployed. Here's the, here's the solution we had. And sometimes folks say, well, that's great, Tim, but I've got a brand new product. I'd really love to figure out a way to, to be able to talk about it in more of a commercial way. Great. Take it to the innovation stage. Take it to the innovation stage and utilize um, our, our social media platform at the International Biomass Conference as a means of driving attendees there. Say, hey, we're introducing a, a new lubricant, 
um, brand new lubricant for wood pellet producers. We're going to be talking about it for 15 minutes on the innovation stage in the expo floor. It's a perfect utilization of that platform. So yes, plenty of opportunities, plenty of venues to get in front of the audience. Um, but, but you got to raise a hand. You got to, you got to put it in front of us and say, here's what I'd like to do. Where's the best place for this? And we're happy to help you figure that out. Great. Thank you. Well, again, we're with Tim Ports, the program director for the International Biomass Conference and Expo. We're talking about that event, uh, which is going to be taking place March 14th through the 16th in Jacksonville, Florida. We appreciate Tim being on. Thanks for being here, Tim. Thanks for having me, John. And My pleasure to talk about the abstract process, right. always. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we appreciate your time and insights on that. And we appreciate everyone being on. If you do have questions, go to biomassconference.com or email us. We'll be more than happy to help. Again, the deadline to submit is November 12th. You can find everything on the website. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you at the show. Have a great day.